Hi, this is Margaret from dataminingdna.com, and this is a demo of using the leads method to color cluster my ancestry DNA matches. The leads method is developed by Dana Leads. I think it's good to know what the ideal outcome is from using this method. It would look something like this. In this spreadsheet, I've got my matches ordered from higher to lower down the left hand side, and the matches have been grouped according to their shared matches. So Shannon, the highest match on this list, has been allocated a color of dark blue. She has two shared matches, Nicole and Susan, who have been allocated the same color. Joseph is the next highest shared match and has been allocated a different color. And Joseph has three shared matches and no overlap with Shannon's shared matches. Given that Michael and Nicole have been allocated colors, due to falling in under the shared match list of Joseph and Shannon respectively, we skip these two and we come to Carol, who gets assigned a new colour. So she gets assigned the colour green and we look at her shared matches. We then come to Connie, who wasn't on the shared match list of either Shannon, Joseph or Carol. So Connie gets a new colour. And by the time we filled in Connie's shared matches, we realise, well, we have no further matches on our list that have not been assigned a colour. And as it happens, every single match falls under one single colour. There's no overlap across the colours. So we have identified four distinct clusters and no more. If another, if a match down here hadn't fallen in under the prior colours, we would have had to assign a fifth colour. But we didn't. And our hypothesis is that each cluster represents the direct line of one of our four grandparents. And from here, you can start investigating family trees. So that's the ideal outcome. The recommendation is that you have at least six to eight second to third cousins in your match list, hopefully more, but the rest of the matches that you incorporate in the exercise are higher end fourth cousin matches. In other words, they have higher levels of centimorgan. Your four grandparents come from different areas. So this is to minimize the chances of intermarriage across the four lines and that there is no known endogamy across your family tree. So those are the recommendations for getting the best possible outcome. How do I stack up? Not very well. Out of my entire ancestry DNA matches, I have two second cousins. The rest of my fourth cousin matches are at the lower end of the fourth cousin range, which means that to bring in enough DNA matches to run this exercise, I had to go down as low as 30 centimorgan. Two of my maternal grandparents are from the same county in Ireland. And finally, I have no known matches on my paternal side. So my paternal side comes from a region of the world which does not get involved in consumer DNA testing. So my ideal outcome would be that I only get two colours. Given that I know that I'm working with a scenario that Dana has said is going to be problematic. I'm going to run through the method as a demo and I'm kind of interested to see what comes out the other end. Just to touch on the method, you start with picking the highest unassigned match in your match list and you're going to be starting from a second cousin and working your way down. And you assign an unused colour to that match in an unused column in your spreadsheet. You open the Ancestry Shared Match tab for that match and you work down the shared match list and assign the same colour to the shared matches that appear in your spreadsheet that you pre-selected. And then you rinse and repeat. Step B is you go back to A and you keep running around this loop till there are no more unassigned matches in your match list. Now, if that doesn't make sense, don't worry, because when you see it in action, it'll all fall into place. So this is my match list in Ancestry DNA, and I've got to pick a set of matches to include in this exercise. Now, there's a companion article on our blog, which has a lot more of the technical details and, and the setup. But just be aware for now that the recommendation is to keep boundary of the upper centimorgans to 400 centimorgan. You want to include as many of your second to third cousins as you can, but not higher than a second cousin. The easiest way to approach this with Ancestry is to use the shared DNA filter and give yourself a custom centimorgan range. Set the upper boundary to 400 and set the lower boundary to what suits you. Ideally, this would be in the either 
older second old second and third cousins are the higher end of some fourth cousin matches i have no choice but to go a little lower than that i'm going to just chuck in 30 there now i have a list of matches that i'm going to include in for the exercise and i want to copy this list of matches their match names and their central organs into my spreadsheet here is that list i've changed the names here but the central organs are real i have a link in the description below to a video in which we show you a more automated way to grab your match list from ancestry and stick it into this excel spreadsheet and what you'll see is that i've already set up two colors because the ideal outcome for me would be that I get two clusters representing my maternal side. With wild optimism, I've thrown in two colours that I expect will be assigned as part of the exercise. So step one is to pick your highest match. For me, it is this match. Open the match and click on the shared matches tab and you will get a list of the shared matches. In terms of inclusions and exclusions, the recommendation is to exclude the descendants of that particular match. In this case, this match's daughter is in the list. I'm going to skip the daughter. She isn't included in the exercise. So just working my way down on the left, I was going to assign the first colour to Margaret. And then I am going to find James and Robert and assign them with the same colour. Um, so James, where are you? James, 31 centimorgan and Robert is directly below him. So there's my first set of shared matches assigned. So once that's done, I move to the next match that is unassigned to a color, which is directly below, which is Joseph. And I also assign Joseph to this unused color column, which is column number two. So I'm just gonna copy that color into Joseph's cell, and then I'm going to look for Joseph, open Joseph, go to the shared matches tab. And now I am going to work my way down Joseph's shared matches. So I have Michael, Carol and Margaret S, Darren, Jean and Gamma. So those are the first two matches, two different colours. And my blind optimism that I'd be able to just fill up the entire spreadsheet with those two colours is clearly misplaced because when I work my way down the list, I've just done Joseph. The next match is Michael. Well, Michael's already been assigned a color, which is great, but Nicole is unassigned a color. So I do need a new color for Nicole. I like to use similar colors that are available from the Ancestry groups. What I'm talking about is that I just swivel back to Ancestry and go to the groups. These are the colors that, that Ancestry give you for the 24 possible groups. We're going to use a mix from these colors because it just makes it easier in future if you actually want to use custom groups to work with the Leeds method. So what I've done in this spreadsheet is I've, I've made a stab at putting in the colors that correspond to the ancestry colors just by eye. And here you can see I've assigned color number one, number two, and then <laughs> I hedged my best and thought, well, maybe I might need another couple of colors. So I've assigned number three at number four. And I am going to give Nicole in this unused column, this is group number three here. I now go back to Ancestry. I find Nicole, open Nicole's match profile, go to her shared matches, and now I work down Nicole's list with the orange. I've got a Carol here, and that Carol, yeah, that's looked familiar. And the reason why it is familiar is because I've already assigned Carol to color number two. Well, that makes no odds. I, because she's on the list for the coal, she also has to get this color as well. So immediately we're getting into the non-ideal situation of matches who belong in multiple clusters. Mark and Gail, where are you? You're fairly low down here. Okay, so now I've used color number three. Okay, no panic. I thought I might have to use color number three and indeed color number four. Because but underneath Cole is Connie, who has been assigned no color. So Connie needs color number four at the top here, just to make life easier. Goes to Connie, and then I need to open Connie's shared matches. 
Connie gets Margaret. Why didn't Margaret get Connie? That isn't right. So user error on my part. Connie, I missed Connie straight off the bat. So what I've got to do now is I am going to take this away. Connie doesn't get a new group. Connie is in Margaret's group. So that means that Connie did, didn't get assigned a new colour. And the next one, two, three, four, five matches, they've all been assigned a colour. So actually the next unassigned match is Susan. Susan does require a new colour. So coming down to Susan, in goes the yellow against Susan. Okay, so apologies for the mistake there. So now I have to find Susan. So Susan has two matches, Thomas and Robert. Now they both have the same surnames. You can't see it, but they both have the same surnames and it's not a particularly common surname. They have similar centimorgans and they both have an unlinked tree. So the question becomes, is it the same tree? I suspect that these two boyos are brothers. If the brothers, having a second one in doesn't add any extra information. If they have the same, their shared match list is exactly the same with me. Wouldn't, doesn't necessarily have to be. One of them could have had an extra match. And that would have been the guy to retain. But I'm going to kick one of them to the curb, just so I don't have an over-representation from a, that particular set. So I'm not going to delete, but I'm going to hide Robert. I'm still working on... Susan's matches, but instead of adding both Thomas and the now hidden Robert as yellow, I'm only going to uh, put yellow against Thomas. Okay, where's I am one two three, and right down here in the weeds, second last match is Tara. Right, so that was Susan. So directly below Susan is Karen. So I now need a fifth color. I filled in four colors. I now need a fifth colour because Karen is unassigned. I'll go back to my colour palette and I will take one, two, three, four. I'll take one of these green colours. So I'll take this back to the spreadsheet. You go there. You're going to be number five, cluster group number five. And it is Karen we're working on. So Karen, you get the green. Shared matches. So we have Connie here. So this becomes a second colour for Connie. And with only one match cleared off the list, one of the things I want to do is, notice how I've gone up. Karen is the actual person that required the new colour. I just want to mark Karen as being, this is purely for my inf information, as the anchor match. I could work it out from visually, but I'm just giving myself a reminder that Karen it was that kicked in this colour into play. Karen hasn't filled any slots below, so I'm going to have to open up a new colour for the next unassigned person, who is Nancy. So this is going to be colour number six. <laughs> My idea of getting two colours is kind of out the window now. Okay. Down, we skip past Thomas C, and we're into Martha, and we need another new colour. So we're at number eight here. No, oh, actually, Martha, you have actually you do have a lot of shared matches, but you weren't assigned by any of them. Did I just miss Martha? Oh, so let me think this through. Martha actually has quite a lot of shared matches, but now I haven't made a mistake here. Okay, so Martha, okay, you've got a lot of shared matches, but they've been filled by other groups. So Martha is going to be responsible for quite a number of other matches getting another colour. So Martha is the anchor. And poor look at Kevin H. Here is all on his ownio. So I need colour number nine. Red for danger. What was I dealing with? Yeah, Kevin H. You get danger red. Who's on your list, Kevin? Just open you and your unlinked tree. Go to shared matches. And yeah, both of Kevin's matches are below the threshold. So I'm not going to give him a colour. What I'm going to do is, because he'd just be on his own EO, I'm going to hide Kevin. Exclude him. 
So that means I still have this ninth color to be assigned. So who's next? Next is Kevin P. Am I done? No. Jody, kind of hoping <laughs> that would be color number 10. What do you got? Uh, Jody has one shared match who is actually way below my threshold. So I am going to not open up a new color for Jody. Thanks, B. I am going to hide Jody. And I'm going to say Tara has been assigned a color. Kieran has been assigned a color. That's it. I'm done. So I'm said that my ideal outcome, given that this is purely maternal matches, would be everybody every every match would kind of cluster separately and distinctly under two groups. I got nine. So that's a demo how to do it. I mean the, the exercise, the process remains the same, so hopefully that just cleared up how to go along with it. Okay, that's it. Best of luck with your own application of the Lee's method to your results. I hope it's not quite as diverse as mine.